The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome into Views from the Sideline. Malik Hill across the desk. I'm Joey Tysick. And uh, we have playoff baseball in Detroit. And it's going on right now. Watching it live. Isn't it wild? I feel like, I know we would, you know, we've kind of glossed over that the Tigers had a chance to get into the playoffs. But to see it actually come to fruition and then win game one, pretty. Pretty dominantly, honestly. It was a 3-1 victory. The ninth inning was terrifying, which reminded me so much of like the old 2010s Tigers. They seem to always do that. Um, but they got out of it. They're up one, um, nothing on the series, and they're playing right now, like Malik said. And we just got out of a little bit of a scary situation in the yeah. bottom of the second. I can't believe Jason Hayward is still playing. We're playing against the Astros. How long has he been in baseball? Um, well, well, since at least like the early 2010s. It would be, I'm pretty sure it was before that. Like it would, it could have been like 2009 or something. Because it's basically around the time that I started playing fantasy baseball, which was back in mm. high school. Didn't he play for the Braves? Yeah, yeah. So we, I believe he was drafted by the Braves, and he was a big power hitter. Apparently, he's not like that good anymore. He's just you know a veteran bat in the Astros lineup. And um, from what I've heard, again. I'm catching up on all the baseball stuff because I just don't watch as much as I used to. But um, apparently the Astros batting lineup is just not that good. Their one through four are really good, of course, um, because they still have um, Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, and um, is it your, it's Jordan Alvarez, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Um, So like their one through four is really deadly, um, but the rest of them are kind of just average bats. Which, realistically, the whole Tigers batting order is average bats. Yeah. Um, the Tigers have done kind of the unthinkable where they basically have one star player in Tarek Skubal. And as good as pitching, as good of a pitcher as he is, possibly best in baseball, That's that only gets you one game. But for some reason, the Tigers just keep winning. And I don't really know what it is. I've watched a little bit. They just, they're winning. They've called up guys from the minors to end the season, getting some of their veteran bats out of there, like Javi Baez and things. And they're just, guys that are getting called up are playing well above their averages, um, both on the pitching and batting. It's just crazy. What Do you have any uh, thoughts about it? How much have you been watching? Yeah, my, my friend Alex, who's a Tiger super fan. Yeah. He's basically said they've done it with the power of friendship <laughs> because, like, there's no other way yeah. to describe how they've done it. Like, mm-hmm. like you said, most of their batting lineup is average to below average, mm-hmm. yet they always find a way to get a hit or a home run or they, they get something yeah. just enough to get them over the hump. Their pitching lineup has been really good, mm-hmm. and Tar- Tarek Schoolboy has basically become, like, the best pitcher in baseball this season. Yeah. He's been elite, and mm-hmm. he shut down the Astros in game one. Yeah. But – it it's been insane watching mm-hmm. them go on the run. They've gone go on. I mean, yeah. I'm like you. I haven't paid a lot of attention to baseball in the past few years. Mm-hmm. When the playoffs come, I'll start to pay a little bit more attention, and I'll watch the World Series usually. Yeah, but I there hasn't been a team in Detroit that's like captured fans' attention. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got the Lions emerging last year. Yeah, but the way the Tigers have done this. Mm-hmm. It's it's extremely rare. But most teams in baseball in baseball history haven't even done what the Tigers did. Yeah, going, oh, I think what thirty one and eleven in like the like last that, yeah. yeah in the last two months of the season, they had like less than a two percent chance to make the playoffs mm-hmm. two months ago, and they ended up getting in. The Twins absolutely collapsed. Yeah, other teams kind of just like leveled off, and they were the hottest team in baseball, and it seems like they still are. Yeah. 
because they if they win this game, they're going on to the next round. Yeah. And who knows what'll happen once they get into a like a longer series. And it'll be against Cleveland, I believe. Yeah, who who knows what'll happen once they get to a longer series, but yeah. what they've done this year and for the city of Detroit really, mm-hmm. getting all the fans back on board, it's it's really impressive. Yeah. AJ Hinch deserves an insane amount of credit for what he's done. Yeah, and and it's one of those things too where like because it's such a wild thing that the Tigers are all of a sudden good, like they could go to the World Series. They could just make that magical run because, yeah. like, they're already playing with house money. At this the point. Diamondbacks made the World Series yeah. last year, <laughs> right? And, and they had like one that. star player. Yeah. Um. I mean, even because it, the Rangers won the World Series last year, correct? Yeah. And even they weren't expected to be all that good. Exactly. Um. So, like, there's a lot of things that have happened that are kind of crazy in baseball the last couple of years. And maybe the Tigers just, they're riding that train and they're they are hot at the right time. And we've seen that in baseball kind of in, in the past before yeah. where, you know, it, it's hard to get momentum in the, in the game of baseball. But once you have it, it's almost hard to stop it as well. So, I don't know. And, and from what I'm hearing, again, the Astros was a good matchup for us just because their bats aren't as good. And then the other fact of if we beat the Astros and we get to Cleveland, supposedly Cleveland isn't that good or unbeatable. Um, so I don't know. It, like, yeah, I, I've heard, just keep going. From what I've heard, they're a good team, but there's nothing like special that stands out about them. Yeah. They've just been like pretty consistent. Right. And then I think like as people are predicting, like we might end up seeing the Yankees at some point. And people aren't that scared of the Yankees. We kind of know what they are. Big power I mean, they, bats. I was about to say, they, their power bats are intimidating. Yeah. But, yeah. So, They're not the I Yankees of old. They're, they're, they're a Yankees team that people think could make a run, right. possibly. So, I don't know. It, it's been fun to watch. And, again, I've been sitting here. I sat yesterday. I was um, doing a lot of uploading and things at, uh, at my desk. And so, I was mostly watching my computer spin and load and things like that and so in the meantime I had the game on in the background and I haven't watched a full baseball game in years probably um I've tried to watch a couple here and there when they're on like ESPN but I just don't have that much of an interest but now that the Tigers are here sure call me a fair weather fan but they haven't been good in almost 10 years or something like listen, that listen I I think there are a lot of baseball fans that have kind of Lost love for the sport in the in the past decade or yeah. so, even more time because I I stopped I stopped watching heavily around like 2011 or 2012. Yeah, around the time the Tigers were really good, mm-hmm. but they couldn't get over the hump. Yeah, so I I don't think we're alone in this. No. Like uh, the Tigers' attendance wasn't amazing. Like fans were weren't that confident in what was happening. Mm-hmm. In the for most of the season, fans weren't very confident. Yeah, until this run started, and then. The every game started to be a sellout. Mm-hmm. I watched like ninety percent of the closeout game that they won over the White Sox. I watched all of the celebration. Yeah, and I was at I, I worked longer yesterday, so I watched like half of the game and watched the rest of the highlights. But I've I've been in <laughs> ever ever since they've started going on this run. I've been in and I've been watching. Yeah, the last few games. So mm-hmm. yeah, I I don't know if that can make me a fair weather fan also, but. It is what it is. Most Tigers fans have been out for right. a while. Yeah, because nobody thought this team was anything. Exactly. Like, they had a lot of promise going into the season. Um, they played pretty well at the very beginning, and then they went through a major slump, and then they were basically out of it. Let's not forget the Tarek Skubal trade talks. Yeah. That that wasn't very long ago. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, there's just – it's just one of those weird happens chances that – the Tigers even made the playoffs. So I think everybody's buying in. But again, it's cool because the stadium was filled up at the end of the season. Um, if they get a playoff series, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, We've already seen what the Lions have done just turning their franchise around. So like sports are back up in Detroit, and everybody's excited about that. Yeah. When the teams are good, everybody's there. Yeah, and it, it's funny. I got a Facebook notification on like you get the memories to look back on in this day or whatever. Back in 2011 was a day where I posted on Facebook that the Tigers won, the Red Wings won, the Lions had won, Michigan, Michigan State had won, 
And I was saying, like, this is when Detroit sports and Michigan have, like, just an insane era. And that's it really was. Um, the Pistons were coming out of their era, unfortunately, so they weren't doing as good. Was but, that, like, the Stafford-Calvin era? Yeah. Where they were good for, like, three or four years? Yeah, so it was probably, it would have been, like, right when Stafford was kind of yeah, getting 20, himself 2011 was when they first made the uh, playoffs. Yeah, I believe so. so. Yeah. Um, So, like... And now we're getting a similar vibe again where, like, the Lions are good. Tigers, I still wouldn't say they're good, but they made the playoffs. They're on a run yeah. right now. In the now, they're good. Um, I mean, they're – they're in terms of what they've done, they're, like, one of the best teams in baseball yeah. in the past two months. Right. Um, Michigan's coming off of a national championship. They're still playing well. They're, they're a little bit down, of course. Michigan State, they've been winning some games. They've looked better. Yeah. People um, still care more about basketball when it comes to Michigan State, and they've yeah. been right. Yeah, and then we have like the Red Wings are supposed to make a playoff push this year. Yeah, they it was disappointing there into the season. This yeah, past season. So like we're back to that era of like Detroit sports could be back. Pistons thirty and wins. The Pistons are just thirty wins. Joey no, <laughs> under <laughs> under. Come on, yeah, I have some hope. I have hope a little bit. I I, I just want to see progress. They're they're. To you me, gotta, they're you like got, you got to believe it. Just I mean, yeah, see it to believe it. They're like Michigan State for me, where I'm just gonna enjoy when things are going well and not be surprised when things go wrong with the Pistons. Um, I'm not expecting any crazy big win change or anything like that. I think they're still gonna be under Listen, 30 wins. No, no super long losing streaks. No. It shouldn't be hard to Let's, get to 30. Yeah, we just need improvement. So that the young guys are making things happen. Um. And the other thing for the Tigers, too, is, like, this is another thing that, like, helps them moving forward. Is like, now their name is back out there. And so now, I don't know how this this management staff is going to work and how the GM feels now that they've kind of swapped things around. Like, if now, if the, if the Tigers gain some momentum going into next season, is he going to be one of those guys that's going to, be a spender. Like, are we going to go out and try to get somebody Finally, to take the team for to the, the first next time level? in years? I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to get you know too hopeful yet, but we could be getting into that point of like filling in the pieces for this team. And if you have a guy like Terry Skubal kind of being the front, the facing guy of the team, we could add a couple more pitchers, add a couple more bats here and there. And we might turn into something. I, honestly, I, the pitching lineup is is nothing close to the concerns. Yeah, like they have young guys mm-hmm. that are per, that are good and coming into their primes. Yeah, like I said, Tark Schoolboy is is becoming one of the best in the game. It's the bats. Yeah, you you need at least like three really good or just straight up quality bats. Yeah, especially when you're playing at Comerica, just a, a big park that's hard to hit out of. Yeah, you need somebody that can hit doubles consistently and things like that. And that's why Miguel was so good is because he could hit home runs, but he could also, you know, hit the gaps. And that's kind of the the one thing that we need. So, yeah, it, it's it's incredible, honestly, to be able to see the Tigers be doing this. And the other fun thing is, like, A.J. Hinch playing against the Astros. It's like a mini revenge kind of yeah. tour thing. Unfortunately, Justin Verlander was uh, taken out. mm and, I was wondering yeah. about that because I, I have no idea. And uh, I also didn't know how the wild card works. Do you know, is it, would it all be, are they all played in, in Houston? All uh, games? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of what if I If they win this game, it's over. If they lose this, they play one more game right. in Houston. But they're all in Houston. Yeah. And that's the advantage. Okay. Um, it's been a while, of like I said. But I was like, hmm, they it wouldn't make sense for them to do a, only a three-game series and bounce back and forth between cities. It's just, yeah. it's too much. Um, so that makes sense because um, it would have been interesting to see JV out there. But, oh well, it's probably best that we don't. So, yeah, crazy times. And by, you know, in a couple hours, we'll be able to know whether the Tigers are moving on or if they got to play yeah. one more, which is crazy. Um, so let's move on to some college updates real quick. Um, Michigan played Minnesota. And they kind of let uh, they they kind of they took the oar away from Minnesota, and then they gave it right back to them. And then they rowed their boat back up into the game, um, kind of out of nowhere. 
So uh, how do you feel about Michigan after that Minnesota kind of ugly win? It's a tale of two halves. Last year, the past few years, Michigan has been a second-half team. Mm-hmm. That's when they really used to take off. This year, it's it, it's it's so much. It's when you have a passing game that nobody really respects. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's easy for teams to gain momentum and come back mm-hmm. because as the game goes on, you rely so much on your run game. Yeah, and they've they've gotten the run game going. It's almost a miracle that they've been able to keep it going. Mm-hmm. Hello, Mullings has emerged. Donovan Edwards hasn't had a great season, but he's still been useful in spots. Yeah. And they just they try to hit whatever passes they can hit. And for like two and a half quarters, that's been working. Mm-hmm. And at some point against better teams, Minnesota isn't even that good of a team. But the defense starts to lose steam. Guys get tired. Wink Martindale doesn't make great adjustments. Yeah, when the, when the offense make adjustments, Wink Martindale sticks with the same thing, mm-hmm. and when his guys start to get tired and lose steam, things start to go wrong, and that's what happened in this past game against Minnesota. They were up big. They should have coasted, honestly. Mm-hmm. There there was a pick that was thrown by Alex Orgy in the third quarter, where he kind of threw he underthrew a pass, he missed Donovan Edwards wide open down the sideline too. Mm-hmm. He underthrew a pass. The safety was able to recover and take it away from Colston Loveland. And from that point on, Minnesota just kind of gained momentum, and they scored twenty-one straight in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. And honestly, they should have had the ball. They should have gotten the ball off of an onside kick to have a chance to win. It was a phantom offside call <laughs> on an onside kick. Yeah. They gave Michigan the ball back, and then there was a wild snap, which. They almost didn't recover, which took them back like 20 yards. Mm -hmm. But luckily, Minnesota didn't have any timeouts left. So Michigan just could just need the ball out. Yeah. It was ugly. They won the game great. They're four and one. They're ranked still. But I, I I just don't feel good about it. Yeah. It just, it doesn't feel good the way they win. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, they say it doesn't matter. A win is a win. Sure. But listen. I, I won't be able to watch this Michigan game Saturday because I'll be out at a concert, mm-hmm. and I'm not sad about it. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that's bad. <laughs> I don't That this so. is the first time I'm feeling this type of way. I think sometimes. Even through the years of them losing to Ohio State, I still came back and watched those games. Yeah. I'd, I'm not going to be mad that I'm not watching them play at Washington. Sometimes it's good to reset your mental headspace and just walk away for a minute. You, you <laughs> Come back later. That's, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Um, the funny thing for me is, um, I've notably told myself not to bet on college football and I did it this past weekend because I won a bet the previous, previous week, <clears throat> my two legs in my parlay that I lost were Michigan. the spread on Michigan and Michigan state. <laughs> I took, so you can't trust them for the rest of the season. It's pretty funny. I took Michigan at minus six and a half was looking great it for was. the longest time. It was. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, man, now I just got to worry about Michigan State. And then all of a sudden, I'm seeing scores go across my screen, yeah. and I'm like, what? And uh, yeah. then... 27-10 Mich- Michigan. Oh, they're still good. Yeah. 27-17 Michigan. Oh, oh okay. 27-24 Michigan. <laughs> Gosh. And yeah. then I took Michigan State, crazily enough, I took Michigan State plus 30 and a half hmm. and lost by 31. Yeah. that That's painful. <laughs> it is. That is. That's really painful. Um, and that's an alternate spread, of course. Um, but I thought, hey, maybe they'll, Ohio State, they can slow them down a little bit, see what happens. Um, and no, it was looking okay for a while. And then all of a sudden, 38-7. Well, okay. So not betting on college football anymore once again. Um not much to say about Michigan State, honestly. Uh, Aiden looked better, but only threw the ball 19 times, 13 completions. Um, one touchdown, one interception. They got smacked by Ohio State, like we thought. Um, Ohio State looked okay. I mean, it, I don't think they – I think Michigan State kind of held their own like I thought they would for a little bit. Um, and then Mich- uh, Ohio State just kind of ran them over towards yeah. the end. Um, not much you can do, but I think the defense played all right. They got Oregon 
a Friday night. So just, I don't know. I mean, I'm probably going to watch the game. Also, I will say, uh, my wife, Marie, she was very excited to watch Ohio State, Michigan State. We did not know the game was on Peacock. Nice. <laughs> she that is great. Was livid. <laughs> and welcome so, to college football, Marie. She basically went. Welcome to, to the. She basically the sport. went to bed because <laughs> in her tantrum. Um, so at least this week we get to watch Oregon, but it's not going to be any different. So I'm. I don't know. We'll see. I tried to tell her it's not too much to worry about because it's just Ohio State. But our neighbor is an Ohio State fan, so she wanted to huh. talk to him. I said, it's not worth it. We're going to get smacked. <laughs> so, anyway, um, Oregon this week, more of the same. Just keep getting better. Look better on paper. That's fine by me. And then have some momentum into Iowa. Because Iowa, I want to see if we can hang. That's kind of the big test for me, personally. Um, any other college games that you want to – Go over. I was doing housework this weekend, so uh, I didn't watch a lot. Alabama of and games. Georgia played one of the that best game games. That game was crazy. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, they played an instant classic. Ryan Williams is a phenom of a freshman. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah Smith is also two of the best freshman receivers I've seen. Um, Ashton Genty is a video game. <laughs> the running back from Boise State mm -hmm. through four games, he has eight hundred fifty yards and thirteen touchdowns. Yeah, should I repeat that? Yeah, go for it. Through four games, he has 850 yards and 13 touchdowns hmm. on 10 yards per carry. Interesting. And the one game where he didn't go crazy was against Portland State because yep. they sat him for the second half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, I don't know if he'll beat Barry Sanders' rushing record, yeah. which is over 2,600 rushing yards. And remember, he had like, did he have like almost 200 yards against Oregon or something like that? He had like over that? 200 against Oregon. He did Oregon have over 200? And three touchdowns. Okay, yeah. yeah. It was pretty much he almost beat them by himself. Let me look it up. Yeah, it was crazy. That's yeah. that's what I remember. He he has been completely unstoppable. His runs are insane. He had 192 on the ground. Okay. But he did have eight receiving, so technically 200 yards okay. all purpose. But three touchdowns. So it's not like they like they played Oregon, okay, Portland State and Georgia Southern. Meh. But they played Oregon and Washington State as well like those teams are solid teams. Oregon, of course, very good. Yeah. But Washington's not a, a bad program either. So he he has dominated everybody he's played against. Yeah. Um Travis Hunter is a Heisman candidate. He had eight receptions for ninety six yards and a touchdown, and he had an interception. Mm -hmm. He struck the Heisman pose. He did it a little too early. He did it like after his interception in the second quarter. <laughs> he needs to learn that's an end of game thing. Yeah. But Colorado is three and one. Mm -hmm. They're still in the Big 12 race. A lot of people thought they'd be terrible. They're okay right now. Their run game is getting better. Uh, besides that, uh, Ole Miss got upset by Kentucky at home. They're frauds again. <laughs> They're just pretty good. Their expectations were too high. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else super notable. Okay. There's, a, there's a lot more conference realignment. Does that make you excited, Joey? No. Yeah. <laughs> I, it just makes me more confused. <laughs> New teams added to the Pac-12. UTEP is coming to the Mountain West. They're keeping, Does that get you excited? They're keeping the Pac-12. You got to love UTEP. Yeah. I, I just thought the Pac-12 was going to dissolve. They, they've added – well, they added three teams for football, and they added Gonzaga for basketball. So, there are four more teams added to the Pac-12. So, Gonzaga's moving to the just Pac Well, every, every sport except football, they're going to play in the Pac-12. Gonzaga is. Okay. And yeah, but the, still for basketball, like, and they 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 they've been a higher level team than the West Coast Conference for years, and yeah, but yeah, now it's but who, it's basically going to be the West Coast Conference. But out of <laughs> but out of who's left, I know this is a basketball like diversion, but like, who in the Pac-12 that's left is good in basketball? I'd, I'd have to remember who the that's other teams like coming the, in are. That's in. my problem like, right now. Utah like, State is coming in. They're good in basketball. Because my thought Washington is – Washington State and Oregon State – Washington State was good these past few years. Before yeah. that, they haven't been great. Oregon State hasn't been very good Because that's basketball. my thought. Is like the Pac that's what I said. It's like the West Coast Conference 2.0. Minus say, St. Mary's. If, if the Pac-12 didn't get rid of everybody, they were good in basketball. This That would have been a great yeah. move. Now it's uh, like – but now they, eh. but now they need somebody like Gonzaga. They need him now. So I guess. 
it's it's basically <laughs> the same thing. It is what it is. It's a lot. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I, I have one more thing about realignment that really make you mad. Okay. Uh, the Mountain West. I said they added UTEP. Mm-hmm. They are trying to add. Uh, get ready for this. Toledo and Bro in Bowling Green. Great. <laughs> cool. Two Mac schools. Nice. Our precious Mac. Oh, they're man. trying to mess it up. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't. Did know. I ruin the show? No. I did, just, I, did I kill I the joy? <laughs> just. I'm sorry, Joey. It's just weird. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know. It's it's too much. Hmm. Like, the my biggest problem, and I know it's a <laughs> dumb problem, but I'm I'm sure I'm not the only one. Is just when you have the Mountain West conference and you get a team like toledo that just does not compute. smu cal and stanford are in the atlantic coast conference just, i know that's even worse <laughs> yeah i've been there but like that kind of stuff just is so you know how much i hated those west coast teams coming to the big 10 yeah i've gotten a cut a used to it now but mm-hmm. it still hurts my heart yeah like at least it's not in like the name like obviously when you think big 10 you think Midwest, yeah, but like it's not in the name of the conference, so sure we can call them the Big Thirty Five in a couple years, but like when you're the Atlantic Coast Conference or something like that, and you have West Coast teams, it just changed the name. The Southeastern or Conference has well, they they figure added Texas A and M in 2012. Yeah, just they figure, sold their souls years ago. Figure something out, and now me. Texas and Oklahoma are there. So anyway, just tough times. But yeah, Georgia has to readjust <laughs> their expectations because it looks like they have some things they got to get worked out. And Alabama's still very good. Yeah. And Jalen Milrow is taking another step. He was fantastic. Yeah, and people are starting running to, and throwing. Starting to think that Jalen Milrow is uh, climbing up those draft boards quickly, and he could be by the end of the season. Number I think one. He, I think he could be a sudden number one. Well, like number one I think quarterback. He, I think he could be number no, one quarterback. No, I've been here. Absolutely that. not. I've been okay. That don't listen to him. They're stupid. Okay. He could be a second round pick, maybe late first. Wow. He's not going top ten. No. People said the same it's, thing about Michael Penix. It is uh, <laughs> listen. Michael Penix was an incredible thrower of the football. Yeah. I, I don't think I don't think anybody's passing Shadur Cam Ward for one and two. Hmm. I don't I don't think it's happening. And Quinn Ewers is probably three. That's probably the top three. Hmm. Shadur okay. Cam Ward and, and Quinn Ewers. I mean, I'm not against it. I'm just no, saying what it's I've been possible hearing. he passes Carson Beck for four. Mm-hmm. That's possible, but uh, no, yeah, not number one. Remind me what I saw on Twitter about Carson Beck after the podcast. Okay, because <laughs> it's really funny. listen. People have said some wild things about that kid. Yeah. I feel kind of bad. I do too, but yeah. it's, it's funny. <laughs> um, all right, ready for NFL? Are you ready for NFL? I am. The Lions had a hell of a Monday night, Joey. The Lions are off this week. They wore all black. They had black Lions on their helmets. It looked way better it looks than spiffy, I thought. Man. I was yeah. surprised. It My brother clean. was sending me Snapchats and things. The end zones looked great. I loved the the paint scheme in the end zone. Um, the helmets looked really good on camera. Some people are wild and just saying they they hated them. Uh, that, that, but there are people that hate all alternate uniforms. Yeah, like, and then people yeah. want to. Want to see the Lions throwback uniforms? I wouldn't mind it. I don't know. I mean, they're, they're okay. Their they're new, new, new uniforms are kind of like a offset of what the 90s and 80s stuff was. Mm-hmm. So I, they need to stop complaining. Yeah. It's a new color scheme. I like that, you know, they changed it up. Finally get to see, like, a black Lions logo on yeah. the helmet. Just something different. Um, but, yeah, look, we can talk about the Lions for a minute because we have some extra time. And they're on a bye week this week. That was one of the most fun games I've watched in a while. The offense Non-playoff is back. Non-playoff game. The offense is back. Yeah, and they pulled out some crazy plays. Just in that game in general, both sides, there were some of the craziest plays I've seen in a season in a long time. But Jared Goff touchdown catch. <laughs> and the perfectly thrown the pass dime. by Amon Ra. Yeah. yeah, and he has explained that he's going to be the emergency quarterback. <laughs> um which is hilarious because if you watch the episode of his podcast when they him and his brother had Jared Goff on, Jared Goff was kind of making fun of him because Amon Ra was saying, I could be the emergency quarterback. And Jared's like, no, no, you're not. 
You're not hey, gonna be. He dropped a dime. But yeah, it looked really good. Um, that Jamison Williams crosser over the middle, perfect. Oh my gosh, is like right when he entered the zone. Goff already had the ball going, and so right when he entered the open part of the zone, the DBs it was had, right to they, him. They, they couldn't get any good angles. No. Like, as soon as he caught it, they were just stuck in place. And it hit him and on he was, stride, so he yeah. was just able to turn up field. Like, it was oh. perfect. High then, step in th- the last 20 yards. And then the David Montgomery run after the catch uh, for 40 yeah. yards. Just, I don't even know. He looked like Marshawn Lynch on that play. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, and then the... The Ken Walker WWE play with Alex Anzalone. That, that looks like rewind, rewound and sped up. It, yeah. does, it doesn't even look real right. like when he flips over and takes because off running. Because Anzalone like, tackled him while flipping him over, but he put his hand down on the ground to cut yeah. uh, to save himself. And then he flipped back over w- using his legs it was, it was to flip wild. back over Anzalone and keep running it, a couple it was, more. It was a lot in that game. It was cool. It was fun to watch. Um, a little spooky at times again in the third quarter. Lions kind of let him come back in the game. Gino, man. man, what is it about Gino? Career day. Gino in Detroit. Yeah, he's just comfortable. I guess fifty-eight passes. Yeah, I'm sure they didn't want to throw the ball that much, but right. Hey, you got to against the Lions. Like yeah. they just stopped the run so well. Even though Kenneth Walker had a pretty good day. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It. It was nuts. And uh, too many pass interferences though. I was just about to get to <laughs> that is the negatives because how many of them do you think were phantom calls and how many uh, uh, Terry and Arnold do you think were too much? <laughs> um, I think it was like seventy five percent that they were good calls. Um, I think Carlton Davis needed to just cool it, cool it for to a me, minute. To me, when you play DK Metcalf, there's only so much you can do. Yeah, unless you like, do you just let him score? I don't like, know. Like, <laughs> I mean, especially if you don't for, get a hand on him, it's yeah, unless you're like a big corner, which yeah, exactly. Ah. Tariq Woolen could probably guard him, and they're they're on the same team, right? Yeah. yeah, like Devin Witherspoon, like the corners that Seattle has are probably better made for DK Metcalf. Carlton Davis, not so much. Um, I think he did okay for the most part, but yeah, I think he got handsy and his post game presser was funny. Yeah, it, <laughs> but like the antics on the field were he was he was a little angry. much for he me. Was, he was angry. Um. Terry on Arnold, I almost feel bad for the kid because there's some, at least in previous games, I didn't look back and watch this game as much. But in like the previous game, I know there was some that I felt like were pretty like 50-50 calls, and it seems like he's just always getting the call. Yeah. I, I'm not gonna like really judge him because he had a great game against Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Like he he never got like a bomb dropped on him. Right. Marvin Harrison had a few good plays, but it was nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. When you're a rookie and you get thrown into the fire like he's he's getting thrown into, yeah. I think he you're gonna have games like this. Right. He is too handsy a lot, mm-hmm. but he ha- he has to learn. Right. He has to learn. So defense overall looked pretty good. Um, Jack Campbell made a big play. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm Rodriguez stepping in. Yeah. For injuries. Kirby um, Joseph keeps making like acrobatic yeah, he's, picks. He's 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 got three picks in four games. He's something else. Um, I think they said two, all three picks are in the end zone, which yeah. is wild. So it's cool to see Jared Goff going perfect. 18 of 18. Uh, for 292 yards is insane. Um, so it's kind of crazy. Like a lot of the media companies this week were actually praising Goff, which doesn't really happen too often. So that was cool to see. And uh, like I said, lines get to go on by kind of the right time. It stinks to have an early bye week. I feel like it's it's not good, but... It is what it is. And uh, when they come out of the bye, they get to go to Jerry World. The Skipper Game Part 2. Oh, man. <laughs> they better blow the doors Let's, off of them. Hey, man. The Cowboys are not that good. No, they're, they're, they're not. Decent. <laughs> they are decent. But, and CD might get his numbers, but. Yeah. The, sca- the thing they that gotta scares me that is everybody keeps talking about, well, the Cowboys don't have a running game. Okay, well, the Lions don't let people run anyway, so Cowboys are going to be fine yeah. to pass the ball. Um, the interesting thing will be if Micah Parsons is back or not, because he's going to be out this week, I believe. Um, and I think they're missing a couple other guys. So that'll be interesting that Listen, way. If Dak has to throw it over 40 times, he's going to make multiple mistakes. Yeah. He has a track record of when his volume goes up, he's going to, yeah. yeah. And I happen. guess the thing that I would say that's nice is their offensive line is not as good as it's been in the past. So Hutch might be able to get some more pressure to him. Yeah. And, uh, might be able to cause some havoc. It was so frustrating seeing him get 
those games like last year where he just kept getting close against Geno. Yeah. And Geno just <laughs> getting away over and over again. Yeah. It's, uh, we need to – it sucks that we lost yeah. Marcus Davenport already to the season. He's just – he can't stay healthy. Yeah. So we'll see. Maybe we look at the trade market. There's been some rumblings. Um, Has James Houston done anything? I don't, no, I don't know he, if I've really seen he him. He hasn't really played. Oh. They, he's kind of getting phased out, it seems like. He just didn't have a good camp this it's year. It's so weird after, yeah. after that, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is surprising. Um, but we did see DJ Reader get to the quarterback um, on Geno Smith one time, his first sack of the season. But, um, oh, really quick, and then we'll have to go through picks quick. But yeah. um, how would you feel the Lions were one of the few names that Adam Schefter threw in for Devontae Adams? It depends on what they give kind up. Kind of as a long shot, but like they there's they've built their defense to the point where like they're set for the future in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Like what are what are they going to give up for Devontae the, Adams? The, Is it just picks for they, the most part? Probably. Okay. They they the Raiders have come I, out and said that they would want a second round pick. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I've if heard you got a second round pick, give it up for Devontae I've, Adams. I've heard a lot of people say no because it could throw off the chemistry of the team. I'm not really mm-hmm. there. I think, to me personally, I know it sucks because everybody loves J-Mo the way that he is, but to put him back as a big play wide receiver three, I'm okay with it. Especially if you think of the thought, just for a minute, picture Amon Ra, St. Brown, and Devontae Adams in slants. How much attention do you have to pay to them too? Yeah. That just opens up J-Mo. You, you have them running slants, Laporta across the deep middle, J-Mo going long. Exactly. I know it sinks. Like, who do you have to pay? Who do you pay attention to? I don't know. <laughs> who do you focus you, on? You run Jameer Gibbs into the flat. Ben Johnson will have a field day. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> now I get the fact that if there's a chance that you could, you would rather have Devontae Adams or Max Crosby. You get Max Crosby. You get Max Crosby every day of the week. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's maybe some people's other point is they want to save picks for if there's a potential defensive end candidate. Um, yeah. I think Trey Hendrickson was another name that people are throwing out just because the Bengals are struggling. So if you could get somebody like that over Devontae Adams, then of course that's what you go for. Knowing how much Max loves the state of Michigan. Yeah. And he's like Devin Booker-ish where Mm -hmm. if he could come back home, he would, but the Pistons are the Pistons. (laughs) Max Crosby would want to play in this culture right? and for the Lions. Yeah. So we'll see, but it's, it's something to think about as Detroit fans. All right. Picks this week. Also picks last week. So, unfortunately, Malik, you had a bad week. That's all not, right. Not really a bad that's, week. That's all right. Um, I got 11 correct picks. I had a pretty that, good week. That's great. Um, you had eight. Um, that's not terrible. You did pick Miami. Um, Listen, I Tyler thought, Huntley did not help. Them. I, I thought it would help. I know. Listen, Mason Rudolph came in. Who could have predicted the way that game went? Yeah, right. It was it was terrible. Um, You had Baltimore over Buffalo. Baltimore blew them out. Yeah. Um, you had Cincinnati over Carolina. I had Tampa Bay over Philly. I had Chicago over the Rams, Atlanta over yeah. New Orleans. I'm never trusting Philly again. I'll just say that right now. And the, the Thursday night matchup that I, I joked about last week that when you took the giants, I took Dallas. It was a decent game, but Dallas won. If so, the giants had a quarterback that could throw deep, they would have won that game. Yeah, well, well, he threw it Danny, to Wondell Robinson. Danny may throw dimes, but he doesn't throw deep. They were throwing like at the line of scrimmage passes all night long. Yeah. Um, so I'm back in the lead for once. 36, 34 at the moment. So starting off with Thursday night, we got Tampa Bay at Atlanta. How are you feeling about these teams? Young Way Koo is the GOAT. <laughs> Game winner. He's one of the greatest. He is. That Atlanta offense is still there's They're- something. Yeah, they're trying to figure like, things out. Tyler Algier is playing better than B. John Robinson. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the tight end number eight? Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is even like less in the offense than he was last year. Yeah, I I don't know what the issue is. Mm-hmm. Their defense is pretty good. I'm gonna go Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, I feel like Tampa Bay has like those juggernaut games, and then mm-hmm. those games where they come back to earth. Yeah. I feel like this could be one of those games. Yeah, I kind of I kind of get that too. Tampa Bay, I'm going to take Tampa Bay just because I think it is a good toss-up game. But even after like 
they looked really good against the Lions, and then I can't remember who they played afterwards. Didn't look as clean. Um, so, I don't know. They're, both of these teams, I mean, again, it's the NFC South in general, but it's just a weird, weird teams where sometimes they look incredible, and then the other times, not as much. And they lose to the Broncos. Yeah. 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 Um, the London games begin. Are you excited, oh, Malik? 9.30 a.m. Are the Jaguars playing in London again? Uh, not this week. Who, who is it this week? The Jets and the Vikings. That's not bad. No, it's not bad. I'm taking the Minnesota. Okay. Minnesota. Now, the, the weird things could happen, but yeah, Minnesota's the best team in football right now. I mean. Yeah, Minnesota 4-0. Kind of crazy. Um, they almost blew it against the Packers. Yeah. But, I'm going to yeah. go with the Jets just for the hope of the NFC North that maybe Sam Darnold has that game where he becomes Sam Darnold of old. Um, also, speaking of Jaguars in London, I don't know if it's next week or the following week. The Jaguars in, are in London back-to-back weeks. That's uh, They need to treat the fans better over there. But their fans, fans love the up. Jaguars. They won't love this. <laughs> they won't love this. Oh, no. Probably not. <laughs> Duvall. Uh, Carolina at Chicago. Chicago. Really? I I think the Panthers kind of lost their steam. They had they had that great win. They still put up a few some good points against Cincinnati, but yeah, they played all right. I, I just I think the Bears found something against the Rams. <sighs> I don't know. DeAndre Swift came alive. It's nothing special, mm-hmm. but they they found a little bit of a formula. Yeah, I'm going with Carolina. I just it's in Chicago. That would be embarrassing for the Bears, and I kind of hope they lose, but I'm taking the Bears. I just still don't see it from Caleb Williams. Just Big yet. Andy Dalton guy. I like where Carolina's at yeah. right now. Former Bears fun. quarterback Andy Dalton, I believe. Yeah. Um, Baltimore at Cincinnati. Cincinnati's look pretty bad, but they, they usually step track. up on these games too. King Henry. He, yeah, hey, that's bro. He is like the LeBron of football. Mm-hmm. At this age, at his size, how is he moving that fast? Yeah, I think they said he was like the third fastest ball carrier of the Listen, season. He has the longest runs in Titans and Ravens history. Yeah. That's a ridiculous. Nuts. I'm going Baltimore. You convinced me. <sighs> I'm going Henry. Baltimore too. Yeah. Yeah. Cincinnati's defense is just they're not good. Besides Trey yeah, they're, Hendrickson. They're missing they're missing some things. Um Miami at New England. Holy smokes, I am staying I am far away from this game. With New England. <laughs> no matter who the quarterback is. And I hope they play Drake soon. Because my God, watching that <laughs> Brissett offense, I, I'm done. Yeah, let's get the get let's get the kid in there. We need some competition for uh, Jaden Daniels. We need yeah. some competition. I'm gonna go with Miami. I don't know why. Maybe they figure something out. Listen, maybe they hit Tyreek on a few deep balls. Yeah, in this one, maybe. and that separates it. They tried to use him a little bit more in like this last game. Seventeen ten Miami. <laughs> they put him in the backfield like four times, and he just they, they tried to figure didn't out do something. anything. Yeah. I don't understand. Okay, we'll do a minor tangent real quick on the Dolphins. I don't understand how their offense is so much different without Tua. Like, I don't think Tua is that great. I I think he's good, and I think if they don't, I think he's good. I think if they don't have good, it's just weird. It is bad how like how much they fall off. Their their offense is just non functional without him, or they just don't have competent backups. Yes. Like Tyler Huntley, Tyler Huntley just got there. Yeah, he's learning the offense and doesn't really know what he's doing. Skylar Thompson. Yeah, but like, yeah, are the Dolphins just crying like when they go home? When they 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 go home and they see Joe Flacco tearing it up, Andy Dalton tearing it up, like all these veteran you guys. Have cut Mike White. I'm like maybe, <laughs> maybe like you Mason Rudolph looked acceptable the other yeah. night. They they don't have a confident backup. Some teams just don't get it right. Call former Dolphin Ryan Tannehill. What's he up to? Hey, call Ryan Tannehill. Come on. Yes. I, that is a good idea, actually. Bring him back. I, like, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, Cleveland at Washington. I'm going with my boy. Yeah, got got to go Washington. Deshaun Watson used to be the the young up-and-coming quarterback. Yeah. And Ain't no it's, more. It's, it's bad, man. Yeah, it is. It's, it's all bad. Poor Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Cleveland. Nah. I guess not, but 
They signed Deshaun Watson to a two hundred fifty million dollars. You're right. Deal. I'm sorry. You're right. No, no, poor Cleveland. Maybe they a little bit. Suffering. A little bit. Sorry to the fans. Maybe yeah, the, the, fans the fans didn't fans, want it. Yes. But still. even though there was some fans supporting it too. Yeah. So forget them. But <laughs> Washington. Washington is so much fun to watch right now. Yeah. He's completing eighty two percent of his passes. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, Indianapolis at Jacksonville. Maybe Joe Flacco plays. Maybe he doesn't. Does Jackson? I'm gonna give Jacksonville their first win. I don't okay. think they start like, oh, how how long can they keep this going? Trevor Lawrence is missing wide open but, passes. I don't know. Well, I don't know what happened to him either. Travis Etienne might lose his job to Tank Bigsby. Tank is good, man. Um, I was high on him out of Auburn. Brian Thomas is starting to look pretty good, though. He's their one like hope, Brian Thomas and I, Tank Bigsby. I'm going Indianapolis, hoping that Joe Flacco plays. Okay. Um, Buffalo at Houston should be a fun one. That's interesting. Is Nico Collins the best quarterback? Wide receiver in the league? He's the most productive so far. <laughs> it's crazy um, how good he's been. I He's been great. Did not expect that out of him. I'm going to go Buffalo. Okay. Bounce back? Yeah. This might be a stupid pick, but I'm, I'm just going to go with Josh Allen in this one. After getting shellacked by Baltimore? Yeah. Um, hmm. Houston's supposed to get Joe Mixon back. I'm going to think Buffalo is going to need back-to-back playoff caliber losses to maybe get themselves back in gear. I'll go with Houston. Ogumbo Wale. Give him more carries than Mixon. Oops, I just did that backwards. I'll take Houston, I guess. Uh, Las Vegas at Denver. I'm, I'm taking the Bo Nix situation. You know what? So am I. Big Bo Nix guys. I just think their their defense is good enough. They're they're really good. Yeah, they are really good. Surprisingly, and if yeah. Vegas doesn't have Devonte Adams, that Listen, means Pat Sertan is going to be on Jacoby Myers. I don't know where they're at mentally. I have no idea. Yeah, they're going to be in a rough spot. Their mm-hmm. running game is awful. Their defense is not good. The, the Vegas Raiders are just bad. Yeah. Um, Arizona at San Francisco. San Francisco is missing some guys. But they get they got guys back last week. They got Devo back. They got George Kittle back. Yeah. So now they're basically just down McCaffrey and maybe a couple of defenders. Can't remember. Arizona almost pulled a shocker at Buffalo. Yeah, but and then they lost to the Detroit, and then they lost San to Francisco. Washington. Yeah, San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going with San Francisco as well, and I only bring that up because in my in my fantasy league, they had a survivor pool with Arizona, uh, or. Two people picked Arizona over Washington, and I just thought, really? When Washington's been playing that good, you're going to take them, like, short fire? Okay. I don't know. I didn't see it in Arizona. I just, I think they're still figuring out their young team. Uh, Green Bay at the Rams. I think Can the Jordan Rams. Love get back on track? I think so. I think he did at the end of that game. I'm going Green Bay. Okay, me too. The Rams are just pitiful. Yeah. All the Matt Stafford pulls off those they, second half comebacks. And yeah, they figure it out. Yeah, this is another game where I would like it if the Rams beat Green Bay. It'd be funny, but just going with talent wise, I'm going to switch my pick. I'm going to Rams. Okay, I'm probably going to lose that one, but it is what it is. I mean, hey, I'm taking risks early in the season. If you get a Matthew Stafford comeback, like you said, maybe they yeah. figure things out. But I don't know. Uh, Giants at Seattle. Really? This is at Seattle? I thought it was at New York. I'm going to Seattle. Even if it's in New York, I'm going to Seattle. I just want to double check. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to pick Seattle as well. I had a short amount of faith in the uh, Giants. Yeah, it's at Seattle. Their ship is built around a rookie receiver. Yeah, and he might and, not even play this week. Yeah, unless that receiver's name is Randy Moss, I don't think that's great. Yeah. Or Jamar uh, Chase. Sunday Night Football. Dallas at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Really? I like what they're doing. Okay. They 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 could have came back and beat Indianapolis. They almost should have, but Joe Flacco didn't allow that. You like Pittsburgh. Justin Fields starting for them over Russell Wilson? Yeah. Okay. Um, It'll be funny if there's a random chance that Cordero Patterson could be the lead back for them. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Uh, if Jalen Warren is out, they've been kind of putting in Cordero in a little bit more over Najee lately, so that would be funny. Um, I'll go with Dallas. I think this is kind of a boring Sunday night football. Maybe I'll be wrong, but Dallas is just 
they're very meh this year. They're not even exciting to watch. Their defense isn't nearly as good. I hope TJ Watt destroys everything they do. That would be great. Um, and then Monday Night Football, New Orleans at Kansas City. Kansas City, we don't know about Rishi Rice. He's definitely going to be out this week. Um, supposedly, there's a little bit of good news. They don't know the extent of his injury, but they couldn't tell on the first testing. So they won't know till like sometime next week whether he has like a full tear of his ACL or whatever, or maybe it's not as bad as they thought. Um, but either way, he might be out for a while. They're already without Isaiah Pacheco. Patrick Mahomes has looked suspect at times, but it doesn't matter. They win games. Yeah. Maybe the other the other possible place that people have been talking about for Devontae Adams is he's going to follow Derek Carr again and go to New Orleans. <laughs> um, now, that won't happen for a while, but New Orleans playing pretty well. Uh, it's so hard to bet against the Chiefs, even when they're down. Like, I want to, but they signed Kareem Hunt um, off their practice squad, elevated him, and he's immediately stepped in as a starting running back. I'll go with New Orleans. You know what? Screw it. I'll take the Chiefs. Fair enough. And then, like I said, we've got, what is it? Detroit, Tennessee, Philadelphia. There's one other team on by. I can't think of who they are. Oh, well. Got some bye weeks started. More buys next week. Um, this is where things get interesting, I would say, as bye weeks start happening. Um, but the NFL season has been pretty fun. Last week, they had like 60 touchdowns, I believe. Um, so the offense has really stepped up. Compared. I kind of disagree. You think so? Even with the more offense, I just don't think the product has been that great. Okay. Overall? Yeah. What do you think is wrong with it, with the product? I don't know if the coaching has dropped off. I don't know if overall QB development has dropped off. To me, something is missing. Mm-hmm. It's not. It doesn't feel the same as when we were younger, when all the quarterbacks like were experts, it seemed. Yeah. And defenses, it's not that they were just like more physical. It seemed like defenses... Guys were like masters of their craft at each position on defense. Mm-hmm. And even I, I don't it's 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 hard to explain. I kind of really get like it's explain. more it's more schemed up defensively. Um again with like the the two high safety looks. Um so they're they're forcing teams to run the ball more. But I think the other thing too, like that you don't think about is because we've had so many tandem backs. These days, like, we don't have those dominant running backs necessarily. Like, we still have Derrick Henry. Well, the the, the, the game is leaning towards passing, so that's right. the part where that So is. now, with this, like, quick swap of kind of almost, like, back to short area yardage things and running the ball, I don't feel like teams are necessarily built for that at the moment. Um, so we don't have any, like, dominant, big bruising backs that can just tire out a defense like Derrick Henry does. The Lions do it pretty well because they have two dynamic backs. Yeah. David Montgomery is kind of like today's power back. Right, and you can see teams like get worn out by the Lions towards the end of the game. But again, like they're just we're just not giving up big plays throughout the NFL. It's not happening as often as we've seen in the past because it was happening, I think, so often that now it's kind of reverted back. And I don't know. It's, it is an interesting thing. Um, I think teams are still figuring out ways to get around it, which is why I think it's at least exciting to see some scoring going on. But I, I get the concern of, I don't know, not being like we remember it. But again, we were too, like we've talked about this before, like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, like these are yeah. all-time greats. Like Maybe even, we just got lucky. Right. <laughs> I like, don't know. Like yeah. even Patrick Mahomes might beat, Tom Brady by the end of his career by chance. Yeah, we we know he's on track to be the greatest. Right. But then after that, yes, Josh Allen's great. Jalen Hurts is great. Lamar Jackson's well, probably going to be in I, that great. At this point, I wouldn't put Jalen Hurts in there. No, in the, in but I'm just saying, like, in the, the time period now, they're great like, quarterbacks. I, I'd put Joe Burrow ahead of Jalen Hurts. Okay. Even though he's, yeah, he's at his but, down. But even those guys, like, as great as they are right now, 
they're not even sniffing all time great category yeah. right now because they haven't done anything. Um, Lamar Jackson, he's probably the next closest behind Patrick Mahomes, but he's got to win something at yeah. some point. And if he does, then he can get in that conversation. But right now, like they're all, they're great quarterbacks for this era, but not all time. So yeah, maybe we were just, you know, we didn't realize how good we had it. You know, one of those kind of things. Uh, I don't, I don't think we did. But uh, like even you know, people don't like to talk about him. Ben Roethlisberger won some Super Bowls. He was great, and he was great, all time great. Because he won. Rivers. Yeah. Could never get over the hump, but was consistently high level. This may be controversial, Kept in games. but Eli Manning, he's going into the Hall of Fame. He was a winner. So He wasn't a great quarterback, No, but not, he was a winner. Not overall, but yeah. he stepped up when he needed it. Yeah, they're, they're, Most quarterbacks today can't do what he did in those playoff runs. Yeah. He almost reminds me of like what Joe Flacco did. Like he's, yeah. I mean, he did it Him and Tony twice. Romo were like the opposite of each other. Great yeah. regular seasons for Tony Romo, zero yeah. playoffs. Sounds, Average regular seasons for Eli, great playoffs. I don't know. Sounds just like a Cowboys quarterback to me. Listen, <laughs> ending this ending this podcast, <laughs> going in on the Cowboys is the best way to do it. Anyway, Cowboys uh, suck. <laughs> Jeez, they do. They're the cowgirls. But um, yeah, this has been views from the sideline. Tigers still zero to zero. Yeah, bottom of the fifth. Tight game. Bo Brisky is in. Man, he was See throwing he heaters yesterday. So hopefully next week we can talk about the Tigers moving on in the playoffs. We'll talk about some more college football as we have some more meaningful games. And Bo Brisky just ended it. The lineup. Oh, okay. So yeah, back to the back to the top. Uh-huh. And uh, with that, we'll see you guys next week. Go Tigers.